What is happening, people? It is Brian Alds with NeverSafe.com, and as promised, today I'm gonna come back to you guys with some finishers for your squat day. We just covered the bench day, now we're gonna do squats. But really fast, guys, please be patient because this is a sponsored video. I only do about three sponsored video a year, and the reason why is because I get a lot of offers, but honestly, most of them have nothing to do with something you guys might be interested in, or it's something that I honestly wouldn't use. So if that is the case, I won't really do any type of sponsorship thing for it, but this is actually one where they sent me the ad for it and I actually wanted this anyway. So I figured why not do a ad for it and let you guys know my opinion and then go from there. So this thing is Cove Commuter Wireless Speaker, all right? So you can use it as a speakerphone for your phone. You can run podcasts through it. If you're in your kitchen, sitting, chilling, whatever. Uh, what we use it for here at the gym all the time is when we're outside, doing hill sprints that is far away from the gym or we're outside throwing. You guys see us doing a lot of throwing right now, getting ready for the official Strongman Game Worlds. But whenever we're outside, we can't really hear the music, but we can plug this thing in and it actually does really well. Now, I do have other versions of kind of a speaker that would be compared to this, but they are a little bit older. So I will say this sound quality is actually better, but again, I'm not comparing apples to apples because it is not a brand new thing. I will say this thing does have two different tones. One is a bass mode and one is a regular mode. For me personally, I think the bass mode is better, especially when I'm outside because the bass kind of carries a little bit more in the open air and wind with all the open fields that we have here around the gym. However, I know my opinion can often be skewed, especially when I'm getting paid to say things. So the other morning during conditioning, I actually brought it out for the class and we did some of our conditioning with this speaker instead of the normal sound system that's in the gym. And I can say that my gym is over 4,000 square feet with high ceilings, doors were open, and and this thing actually was good enough to blare everything else out. I mean, it's not nearly as good as the sound system that we have, but very, very doable. If we ran out of electricity, this thing would be the best thing going. Now, obligatory, I need to tell you guys that this thing has a range of 30 feet where they're plugged into your phone or wherever you're Bluetooth to this thing. However, I will say that even during the taping of this and showing you guys as I'm walking around, I am well beyond 30 feet. So it definitely over delivered there. It has an eight hour battery life. I've actually had this thing for probably about a month and a half. And the reason why is because when I looked it up on Amazon, once I got it, listened to it for myself and did things, I was looking at reviews to see what people didn't like about it, see if I did not like those same things, as it's often a good idea to do when you're trying to really get the good and bad both of a product. And a lot of people said, well not a lot, I think like three or four people said that after a couple weeks they started having some problems with it rattling and doing different things. So I beat this thing up because I'm not easy on anything. I've used it for a couple weeks just to make sure that if something was wrong, I wasn't selling you guys some junk. Um, so uh, I don't have any complaints. I actually am using it, I like it. And the thing that I absolutely like most about it is that this thing fits all standard cup holders and when you are a hard working entrepreneur, you don't really have the type of cars that link with Bluetooth, or at least I don't. So uh, I'm stuck with that aux cord life, if you guys are familiar. Uh, those only work so well, especially when you're driving around with dogs and they hit that aux cord a lot. So this thing actually works perfectly to sit inside my cup holder and I can listen to my podcast, all my music, to whatever I like to do, especially I like to just plug in my own videos and listen to them because then it's like uh, me with more me, which is pretty much the best day ever. But thank you guys very much for being patient with me. I hardly ever do these sponsorship videos, guys. So uh, if you guys do want to pick it up or check it out, the link will be in the description down below. But thank you very much to Co for giving me this opportunity and just sponsoring the video. Now, on to squats. All right, so now for the actual point of the video where I talk to you guys about some squat finishers. Now. When I'm talking about the assisted finishers just like I did in the bench press, guys, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to get you to buy into what I'm trying to do. All that I'm saying is, this is what I've been doing lately and it's worked 10,000 times better than doing standard straight sets or just normal assistance work. Because to be completely honest, I'm working probably twice as hard as I normally do because I'm mentally focused, I'm involved, I'm pushing physically, I'm pushing mentally. I actually at some times don't even feel like my workout really begins until I get to the assistance portion because it's always so brutally hard. Now, there's something to be said about doing that static strength and working through those you know, really heavy lifts and getting through all that and that is awesome. However, when you start moving heavy-ish things quickly under time and you, it's almost like a race or a competition, you definitely push harder than you normally would otherwise. Plus, it saves you a ton of time, guys, and as an older lifter, compared to probably many of you watching this, if I can give you one piece of advice, it is to stop wasting time. I know you really enjoy standing by the squat rack and talking about the latest whatever is going on in the world, but I would rather see you get good quality work and knock that stuff out, 
get done. And then if you want to hang out with your buddy Dave next to the squat rack and talk about stuff, then do that. But being distracted in the middle of things, you're just upping your chance of injury. You're upping your chance of not doing anything good. So please just throw down, try these out, do some assistance work, at least try them every once in a while, because trust me, at least you're gonna leave the gym feeling like you worked that day, that I can guarantee. Now just a quick thought, when you're talking about what muscle groups to hit, kind of when you're looking at the weak points of the squat, you're gonna be of course focused on your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, your core, and probably a lot of upper back. So the bulk of your assistance stuff should definitely be made up of the exercises that will focus on those things, however, if you get stuck in the bottom, you might want to focus a little bit of the variation towards things that will help that or in the mid range or even the top lockout. I don't know a ton of people have a lot of problem with the lockout of squat. However, if you do, you gotta find out what it is that you're weak at and start addressing that and just hammer it, hammer it, hammer it so that that weakness becomes a strength. So the first squat finisher that I wanna to talk to you guys about is going to be for people who are having trouble holding their position on the squat, like your knees collapse in when you're coming back up out of the hole or you're just folding in half and you're having a lot of problems like that, which is just about everyone that I talk to. Now I've done a lot of videos discussing the different points of what you could do to stop your knees from collapsing in and from folding over and doing different things like that. However, that's not what we're discussing right now. Right now we're gonna be giving some exercises to address those points. Now for the time frame, it's probably gonna take you about 10 to 15 minutes to get this done. And your rep range is simply going to be five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five. Understand? Really hope so. I suck at math and I understand. So now that you know the rep range, we're gonna be doing two different exercises. The first one is the barbell walking lunge. Now, if you need to do something like dumbbell walking lunges, you can absolutely do that. However, I do feel like the barbell walking lunge is a ton harder and carries over much more to the squat because the bar is actually up on your back and you're dealing with a lot of the core stabilization muscles that you're gonna be using in a squat. When your arms are hanging down below, definitely much less of that and the chance of you using momentum absolutely goes up. Now, I know a ton of people do not like doing lunges because they say that it hurts their knees. Now, I would just tell you that if that is the case, then most likely you're doing lunges incorrectly. I have entire videos that address what to do as far as that goes, but a couple quick tips is number one, always be forcing that knee out, and number two, do not start your downward motion of the lunge until your body is stable. So a lot of people will take a step and immediately start to drop, and that means that you're carrying momentum forward, and as you start to come out of the hole, you need to use your knee as a break to stop the momentum and change the direction, and that becomes a big problem. That is why your knees probably hurt, my friend. So instead, when you take your step out, you need to think about like your groin. Whatever you consider your groin, right below everything, needs to drop directly down to the ground. So you take your step, everything settles, you drop straight down, you come straight up, then you take your next step. For 99% of people, that nullifies all knee pain, so definitely give that a shot. That is your first exercise. The second one is going to be a tempo squat where you're using the exact same weight as the lunge. Now, I'm gonna assume that if you're doing the lunge, you're gonna be using something in the range of, let's say 100 pounds to 225 pounds for, for most people's strength. Now, for these squats, they're gonna be tempo squats, so it does not need to be heavy. I want you to be focused on what you're actually doing. And remember, this is for people who are having trouble holding their actual shape during the squat, so you're getting a lot of time to actually focus on your bottom position, your chin position, where your back is, where your hips are, all of that. So for the tempo squat, once you walk it out, I want you to take four second count on the way down. Once you hit bottom position, I want you to hold in the bottom for four seconds and then take four seconds to come back up. Breathe, rebrace, get everything reset, just like that bolt action rifle that I just talked about in the last Q&A. Get everything reset and then start your second rep. Now, you have all of your reps of that, whether it be five, four, three, two, or one. So the way that I actually like to do this is I will set a bar up in the rack. Now I will walk out the opposite way, like if you were going to mess up a squat and walk out the reverse. I walk out, I will take my five steps forward. I will turn around, take my five steps back. I will put the bar back into the rack, or if I do not need to, I will go right into my tempo squats. Once I'm done my tempo squats, I will put the bar away, and then I have a 45 second wall sit. Now, typically I just do my wall sit on the side of the cage or the rack, and that works out fine for me. Puppies! Be good! Sorry, still dealing with this puppy life. But basically, I will do five walking lunges out of the rack, five walking lunges in the rack, five tempo squats, 45 second wall sit, rest as long as I need to, manipulate weight that I need to, because again, I'm working down set, so I can absolutely be adding weight if I want to. Then I restart my next round, where I go four walking out, four walking back in, four tempo squats, 
wall sit, and then I deal with that just like I'm gonna deal with these puppies. I'll be right back. But trust me, you do not need a lot of weight to absolutely destroy yourself on that. That is an awesome way to finish off your squat workout. Let's move on to the second assistance finisher. As far as time goes, we're gonna be working with the Tabata protocol. Now, if you do not know what the Tabata protocol is, uh, you're probably not too involved in fitness, okay? All that it means basically is that you're gonna do 20 seconds of work followed by 10 seconds of rest. You're gonna do that eight times or four minutes, right? So it, eight rounds is gonna end up being four minutes. Math. But instead of a typical traditional Tabata where you're gonna take that 10 seconds of rest, we're gonna go ahead and stick some more work in there. So first thing you're gonna do once you decide on what weight you want is you're gonna stack a couple plates behind you because you're gonna be doing a box squat as part of this Tabata sequence. If the top part of your squat is weak, then I'd make it higher so you're working that lockout. If the bottom is weak, go lower. Do whatever you need to do to actually work that weak point. But when you're doing the 20 second portion of your Tabata, I want you guys to be doing good mornings. Now, you do not need to go super heavy, and I know so many people are terrified of good mornings, but you guys do not need to be. If you guys learn how to do them correctly, just like you learn how to do everything correctly, a squat is super dangerous if you do it like an idiot. However, if you take the time to learn everything just like you could on the good morning, trust me, the benefits of the good morning so far outweigh the risk if you are doing it correctly, and part of that is learning the breathing and bracing, so do that before you ever try to start a good morning. But you're looking at 20 seconds of good morning and again, you're working for 20 seconds, so you do not need to knock this out of the park. Do not look like one of those little woodpeckers trying to drink water in the uh, old time toys. Do not be doing any of that. Take your time, I don't care if you get four reps, eight reps, whatever you gotta do, take your time, do them correctly. But once that time ticks over, you're immediately dropping into a box squat. Now you only have 10 seconds of box squat, so what I want you to do, Get down to that box, pause very, very briefly, and explode up, almost like you want to jump. You have 10 seconds, so you are working, working, working. As soon as that 10 seconds is over, you switch right back to the 20 seconds of good mornings. You continue to do this, and you vacillate between those two exercises for eight rounds or four minutes. Once that four minutes is up, I want you to drop into the plank position and hold that for one minute, because this is your rest, my friend. Now what I want you to do, we're gonna go right back into another Tabata protocol, exact same type of thing, except we're switching out the exercises. So your first 20 second exercise is going to be the Bulgarian split squat. Now just like the walking lunges, unilateral leg work is so important for the squat. And this one in particular is going to hit your glutes like no other exercise that you're gonna work. So Bulgarian split squats, you're gonna go for 20 seconds. Now, since you're only working one leg, what I would recommend is on all the odd minutes, you're going to be working your left side. On all your even rounds, you're gonna be working your right side. And you just vacillate it like that. Now, that is your 20 second portion. For your 10 second portion, you're gonna quickly rack the bar, kick it to your front squat position, and just start knocking out front squats as fast as you can. You only have 10 seconds, the weight's gonna be light, so just knock them out. Try to get your quads burning like crazy. As Soon as that 10 seconds is up, rack the bar, throw it on your back, now you have the other side of your Bulgarian split squats. You do this again, eight total rounds or four minutes, and then after that you have one more minute of plank as your rest, 10 minutes, you'll be absolutely thrashed, your legs will be done, you'll actually feel like you did some athletic, balancing, all kinds of cool explosive stuff for your assistance work, it will make you better, and 10 minutes you can get a lot done. On to the third assistance finisher, which is going to be a pretty extremely light one because this one is more of a mindset than actually much of anything else, and it's only about 32 to 36 reps total, but what I want you to do is grab 50% of your one rep maximum squat, throw it on a bar. If you can do 50%, great, up it. If you can't do 50%, lower it, because this is going to be challenging. Now, I really like this, number one, mainly for building your brain and your mind and your heart and everything else, but it does work the bottom of the squat very, very well because you spend an enormous amount of time paused in the bottom there. And all you're gonna do is find the song Flower by Moby. You will maybe probably have heard it before as Bring Sally Up. And don't worry, you don't even need to buy the song. You can just YouTube it. Trust me, it is all over the place. However, once you hit play, then you just follow the lyrics of the song. When it says Bring Sally Up, you stand up and stay there until it says Bring Sally Down. However, when it says Bring Sally Down, sometimes they go into a chorus, sometimes they do different things, but you do not come out of the bottom of that squat until they say bring Sally back up. So sometimes you're down there for four, five, six seconds and then you come back out. Doesn't seem like a big deal until you pack 36 long pause squat reps into about three and a half minutes. It is extremely challenging. I would highly encourage that you do it because for nothing else, you can always say that you did. And you're welcome for the story that you're gonna be able to tell. And then finally guys, just like on the bench assistance finisher workout, I'm gonna throw something in for Mindset. Now this one actually means a lot to me. If you guys look behind me, that is a poster of Mike Jenkins. Mike actually celebrated his birthday uh, very recently. If you do not know who Mike Jenkins is, 
He was uh, a very predominant strongman. He was top echelon in World Strongest Man. He was just such an amazing guy. He was a friend of mine. We went to high school together. We trained together. Uh, amazing things. Anyway, a couple years ago, Mike passed away right at Thanksgiving. Mike passed away. So every single Thanksgiving since then, uh, either the day before or on Thanksgiving morning, I do this squat workout. So if you guys have been impacted by Mike somehow through any way of the strength community, then if you guys want to jump in on this, please feel free because I will absolutely be doing it. But all that you're going to do again is load up a bar with about 50% of your one rep maximum. Now, once it is up there, you're just going to stand in front of a clock and you're going to set your mind onto something that you truly, truly care about. That's why I do it every single time at the memorial of Mike's death because I really put it into perspective. Mike was a very young man when he died and uh, I'm already past his time and I have a lot of health problems between brain tumors, broken backs, throwing up every day. So I am super, super thankful for every single moment I get. So when I'm doing something like this, that is what I'm thinking about is the people who are not able to do this anymore. They've lost their legs, they've lost their arms, they've lost their lives, they are no longer with us. Whatever the case may be, those people would give everything they could to feel the pain that I'm about ready to feel. So it is a gift and I'm gonna treat it as such. So all that I'm gonna do with that 50% squat for three minutes, I'm not gonna re-rack that bar. I'm gonna get as many squats I can in that three minutes. Once that three minutes is up, I'm gonna rack the bar and I'm gonna rest for three minutes, which you are absolutely going to need. Once that is done, I get back under the bar, two minutes, as many reps as I could possibly do, and then two minutes of rest. Then get back under the bar, one minute, one minute of rest, and you are done. That is one of the most brutal things that you will ever do if you truly give it the attention and respect that it deserves. Like I said, it's more of a mindset thing, so it's not something you can do all the time. But if you guys did want to do that around this Thanksgiving, I would really appreciate it because Mike just meant so much to me in my life and he made such a difference in so many people's lives. So uh, if you guys did want to do something like that, that would be very, very cool and I would really, really appreciate it. And so there you guys go. Those are some squat assistance finishers. There are so many different ways that you can do with this. Guys, the squat is so much fun. You can add in sleds, you can add in running, you can do all kinds of amazing things. And with the squat, you can really get in that mindset aspect because it's just racked on your back and you're just dealing with the suck. So I am so stoked. I really, really hope some of you decide to actually attempt to do some of these or at least make up your own and start doing something interesting with your assistance work and make working out fun, fun again, become athletic, become a dangerous lifter, guys. There's going to become a time in your life when there is going to be a dare to great situation and if you did not do the conditioning and you did not do the mental tough hardening, then that is going to bleed over and take control of you. You're not only lifting weights and building biceps, guys, it is all about building your mindset and seeing what is possible and that is what you can do with these assistance finishers. So I truly, truly do think they will help you and I hope you guys give them a shot. Other things you guys need to be aware of, December 1st, I have that seminar. Joey Seth's Marriage Gym, link will be in the description below. If you guys want any of these shirts or that cold weather gear, be careful with cold weather gear, guys, because it is going fast. So make sure if you want one of those sweatshirts, either the light one, the light weight one with the uh, black one or the blue one, make sure you guys are going out to that because they're not gonna last long. And of course, thank you very much to Cove for that portable wireless speaker, which actually works amazing. If you guys do want any parts of that, check the description box down below. But guys, I feel so blessed to be able to do a sponsored video, help you guys out, living life of my dreams here in my gym. I just thank you guys so much. I couldn't do it without you. I will catch up with you guys later in the week, but until I do go out to something amazing with lives, keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. <sighs> See you then.